Research indicates taking a look inside your mouth can provide a snapshot of overall health uh, to your body. Dr Andrew Rochford joins us this morning with Dr Philippa Sawyer from the Australian Dental Association. And good morning to both of you. Morning, Carrie. Ann. There's fascinating information that says that dentists really uh, can find out what's wrong with our bodies before GPs. How do you view that? Uh, well, I think we, we need to... It's an interesting take. There, it's re research that's come out that's not necessarily the best research. It's, not, it's heading in the right direction. But basically what they're saying is that if you look after your mouth and you look after your teeth, you reduce your risk of things like heart disease, diabetes, uh, some of the pregnancy outcomes. And I'm sure Philippa can fill me in a little bit more here. But mm. at the end of the day, from our point of view, from a medical point of view, it makes sense. If you look after your mouth, generally these people look after their general health better than people that so don't. So it's not specifically the mouth. Well, Philippa, what sort of indicator is our mouth and the health of our teeth for the rest of our body? I think looking at inflammatory factors in the mouth, so if you have red swollen gums then you're going to have increased inflammatory factors that are going to be in entering your bloodstream and going to other parts of your body, so causing problems elsewhere. So it's just an indicator of a, of a higher risk of these other diseases. So if you've got inflamed gums or bleeding gums, what could that mean to the rest of your body as an example? You can have problems with cardiovascular disease so that it can increase your risk of having adverse events or, or having worse outcomes when you do have an event. So again, how does a bleeding gum affect the rest of the body? How does it work? Inflammatory factors are produced mm -hmm. in, in, in the mouth which then enter the bloodstream and then go into the other organs of the body, so the brain, the heart. Mm. And also in terms of pregnancy, the increased inflammatory factors are implicated in early uh, early births, so preterm births and of course lower birth weights for children result. Even diabetes, um, how can you tell someone may have diabetes by the condition of their mouth? I don't think by looking in someone's mouth you can specifically say they have this disease or that disease, but you can look in someone's mouth and say well it's not exactly looking really healthy so there may be some other things involved here mm -hmm. besides just your oral health. You know. What about Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's, it, it's, there's research showing that the factors that are produced in the mouth could be going to the brain and causing some sort of damage. Now this is very early research and we don't really know all the factors that cause Alzheimer's and so certainly I'm not trying to say that um, periodontal disease is going to give you Alzheimer's but there are indicators and early tooth loss is a, is a prime indicator. I know some years ago it was found there are a lot of people going for you know heart surgery who were healthy, the surgery went well and then a couple of weeks later they're dead and it was literally because of the disease in their, their gums that had not been attended to um, and, and uh, uh, not worked with, with the doctors so it was disease in their mouth which actually killed them. Well one of the, the sites of uh, infection in the blood is your mouth and it's a very common sight and where we see it in the medical world is uh, things like uh, endocarditis or an infection of the heart and especially if you're having surgery on your heart or having your valves replaced we know that people with poor um, oral hygiene have an increased risk of the, the bugs in your mouth and it's a very dirty place your mouth you, you mm. don't want to believe it but it is quite dirty from a bacteria point of view. So before somebody has a, any sort of operation especially a heart operation they should uh, consult their dentist first? Well, not, not specifically, but I think we, we need to really be aware, and this being the beginning of Dental Health mm. Week, aware that no matter whether you're in good general health mm. or not good general health, you need to look after your mouth and your, your teeth especially because it does affect your general health. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we do that at, at various ages and stages? It's, it's obvious that earlier on teach people good habits. Is clean, cleaning your teeth and flossing uh, the most important part, Philippa? I think besides brushing your teeth every day and flossing your teeth, you need to be looking after your diet. You need to be looking after um, your drinking should be in moderation. You shouldn't be smoking. Smoking is just proven to be you know, contraindicated for every part of your body. Mm. Um, so it's not just your teeth. But I guess there's the the complication is that people won't stop smoking because of lung disease. So I find it very difficult that people might stop smoking because they might lose their teeth. Mm. I think there's greater problems with smoking than just your teeth. Mm. Well, why do people lose their teeth? They lose their teeth because they lose the bone that supports the teeth through periodontal disease. And, and how do you stop periodontal disease? It's by looking after your mouth, but also there's about 15% of um, the community who are predisposed to some sort of, genetically predisposed mm. to some sort of periodontal disease. So you need to see your dentist frequently, mm -hmm. you know, at, at regular intervals to make okay. sure you haven't the got those problems. The manual brush versus the electric, which is better? 
any brush that gets in the mouth every day mm -hmm. is a really good toothbrush, I feel. But recommended, a soft toothbrush with a small head. And so the one that we have here is an mm. electric toothbrush with a small head. But any manual toothbrush with a small head and soft bristles. As long as you brush. As long as you're yeah. brushing and flossing every day. And um, the but I suppose the thing with the power toothbrush especially as well is for people, that, a lot of people that have dental disease aren't the dexterity that actually takes to brush your mouth appropriately. Mm. It takes a lot of skill and I suppose uh, some people might find a, a benefit from using a power brush and getting in there and it, it does a lot lazy, of the work for you. Yeah, it does, yeah, does I, look, work I use one for the simple fact that I'm probably lazy but I enjoy it. Just a brush, that's the key. There's categories of people mm. who really benefit from a toothbrush, mm. from electric toothbrush and they'd be people with disabilities. So if, if you have mm. any sort of arthritis or if you are a special needs person with, with intellectual of disabilities course. and you have a carer, that carer is going to find it a, a hell of a lot easier to clean with an electric toothbrush. Philippa, thank you as always. All the information